Hey guys and welcome to another TTK tutorial here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at the TTK Tree View widget. It's one of the six new widgets brought in by the TTK module into Tkinter. And it's one of the more interesting widgets, honestly, and one of my personal favorites. The reason being because of just how much value the Tree View widget brings. It's not just this small widget that's just you know part of an entire GUI application. It's basically the GUI application itself. It's just that big just that important and it's used to create all kinds of interesting things like it can be used to in create entire tables okay and not just simple tables some pretty good ones with good features all right and that I'll show you in today's tutorial as well it can be used to create and model file directories okay and all kinds of cool stuff like that and I'm sure you guys will know all that by the end of this video so without further ado let's go ahead and begin so the first thing we'll do is create the tree view widget itself okay tree view is equal to ttk.treeview, okay, not tk.treeview, master as the parent, and it has two parameters that we're going to deal with right now, columns, and it has height, okay, so as you can imagine, columns is the number of columns, and height is the number of rows. Now, columns is actually a bit more complicated than that. It's actually a tuple, okay, containing all the column names, all right? So what are the column names gonna be? Well, the column names are gonna be name, email, and salary, because that's the kind of table that we're trying to create here, okay? We're trying to create a table of some employees in the company, so we need their name, okay? We need their email, and we need their salary. So we're gonna put all that in here okay now let's go ahead and pack this in just so we can run it and take a look at our output okay there we go there we have four columns instead of three why this is a good question and the reason for this and i think it's a mistake that many people do and something that confused me for a long while as well is that there's already a default column in there Okay, there's a default column in there and it has a name already. What we're doing here is just giving columns names. Okay, we aren't actually making headings yet. Okay, this is an important concept. There's a difference between the name of a column, which we use when programming, and there's a difference in the column heading, which shows up to the end user. Okay, I just wanna make this clear. So since there's already a default column, okay, will reserve that column for the name, okay? And there we go. If I run this, you'll see three columns, okay? Now, next, what we'll do is actually make the column headings, okay? So it's pretty simple. And we just need the column name first. And this actually is the name of that first column, okay? So if I just give it a name now, okay? A heading, sorry. If I pass in name over here and run this code, you'll see name show up over there. So let's do this for the other two as well, okay? And except they actually have proper names, okay? The other two, salary, and we'll just give them more readable names, okay? It's, it's a pretty common thing. Like if you, are, if you are showing something to the user, you would want to make it fancy, right? You would give it, you know, capital, uh, the first letter would be capital and everything, but the name uh, on the back end, on the programmer side, it should be more simple, okay? All lowercase and maybe some underscores separating the words and so on, okay? So there we go, all three columns. Now, what's the next step? The next step is data. We need data. We need to insert something into this. Now, what I could do is just insert a few records in front of you guys, but that's no fun, honestly, because in a real situation, uh, you're going to want to be loading data from somewhere into our, you know, into our tree view widget, into our table. Now, where is that data going to come from? Uh, well, I actually have this uh, text file here, okay, where I put in 10 records. And as you can see, it's CSV format where we have uh, you know, commas separating the data. So this is, there's like the name, comma, email, comma, salary. 
So we're going to read this data into our tree view widget now. Okay. So let's make a function for that called read data. And what it's going to do is open up a file object. I hope you guys know some basic file handling. Otherwise, no biggie. It's not that complicated. Okay. You just open up the file using the file name and the file mode, the R for read, W for write. Okay. And then what we do is iterate over this. Okay. Like this. And let's just print them out right now just to see our output and just, just call the function over here, self.readData. Watch the magic. There we go. Okay. Now let me, let me just tell you what's going on here and why there are spaces in between. That's because when you write them into the file, there's like a new line character at the end. Okay. So when we're reading them, it's actually causing problems. Okay. Because that new line character is being printed out here. So you know what, what we're going to do is use this handy function called rstrip. Okay. That removes that new line character. See, there you go. Now, what I want to do is actually uh, separate them by column. Sorry, I want to separate them uh, by commas around the commas. I want to break the string up because right now we have 10 strings. We need to break each string into three separate values. So what I'm going to do is uh, split and there, that's it. This is the delimiter. Delimiter is the thing, the character around which you want to break the string. Okay, in our case, it's a comma. So if I do this, we end up with 10 lists instead. Okay, and we have our first value, second value, and third value, and so on, which is pretty effective. Okay, so instead of printing this out now, let's focus on saving this in a variable, and then we'll insert this into the window. Okay, sorry, well, into the tree view widget. Okay, so tree view dot uh, insert and the first uh, parameter because there are actually quite a few the first parameter is gonna be uh, parent yeah parent we just leave that empty because there's no parent because uh, all the initial data that we're adding is all you know parent data and then next is where we want to add it okay now uh, we're just inserting this like appending this data so we'll just insert it at the end okay so if we put one record, then we put the other record at the end, which is record two and so on. Okay. This is like appending data. And what else do we have? All right. So the third parameter is IID. Okay. And yes, that's not a typo. Basically it's the ID. It's the ID for the tree view, for the tree, tree view record. Each record needs to have an ID that we'll be using to track it later on. Okay. And if we don't do this now, it'll cause us problems later. Uh, this is actually optional. If I left this out, we could still add in the data. But later on, when searching for this record and stuff, then it'll cause us some problems. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is give it an ID. Now, um, normally, what I would do, normally when iterating through uh, a for loop, you have the index i, right? But in this case, we don't because we're iterating over a file stream. However, if I use this handy little technique called enumerate, okay, I suddenly have access to that I, that index. So if we're iterating over the first line, what this is going to do is give us zero. Then if we iterate over the second line, it'll give us, give us one. I iterate over the second line, it'll give us three, sorry, two, okay, and so on. And enumerate basically is a function that uh, returns two values, basically. Okay, the line over here, the line data that we should normally be getting, and also the integer index. Okay, so we, what we can do is id is equal to index. All right, cool. The next parameter is text. Okay, text is the name. Okay, so it's going to be, uh, you, you know what, let's change the name from temp to values. Okay, that makes more sense. And we'll make this the first variable. Okay, values zero, like the one at the zero is index, the first one. And next is values. Okay, um, on second thought, maybe we shouldn't have made the names the same, uh, but 
whatever. So values is going to be equal to the rest of the values. Okay. Now, how do we get the rest of the values? How do we ignore the first value and get the other values in this uh, list? Well, that's actually pretty simple. It's called list indexing. Okay. What we do is this. There we go. What this says is that from the first index, okay, ignoring the zeroth index, give me everything that's the, from the first index and later. Okay, so that's basically what this format means. It's pretty useful, and I do advise you to go check out, uh, you know, this indexing formats and all that. It's actually pretty cool. All right, so let's run our code and just see just how much we did. Okay, an error straight away. It says tree view is not defined. Of course not, because we need to do this self so that we can access it in the other functions. Okay, just something we need to do. There. Oh, there we go. Look at all that. All of our data is now here. Okay, pretty, pretty cool. And now we're going to take a look at some other interesting stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and create some buttons because I always need these buttons, honestly, because buttons will use them to trigger some interesting functionality. Just watch. All right, text is equal to, um, what was this, add record? Yeah, we'll make one for manually adding records. Then we'll just pack this in. All right. And let's create another one. And this one will be used to delete records. Okay. And there we go. Let me just run this to see what it all looks like. No, I don't like that. So I'm going to, I hope I remember this correctly. TK.left. Yeah. All right. And just go into the right like this. And there we go. Much better, much better. All right. So now what we're going to do is focus on deleting and adding manually. Okay. So what I'll do is come down here and first create our delete data or delete record. What we need to delete the record is the currently selected row, right? Because uh, I don't want to be like, which record do you want to enter? And then you need to enter the record, like enter the record name or something. I mean, you could do that. But imagine how cool it'd be if you could just, uh, hold on, sorry. <clears throat> imagine how cool it'd be if you could just click on one of these and delete them and voila, it goes, it goes, you know. Imagine how cool that'd be. And it'd be like, yeah, I have something proper here. I have a proper table that I can interact with easily and, you know, delete and add records, right? Now, how do we do that? You, you might wonder. Well, it's actually really, really simple because I told you the tree view widget takes care of all this for us. All right. So just watch. Row ID is equal to self.treeView dot focus. Okay. This gives us the row ID. Okay, now because we have this ID, we can actually go ahead and delete it. Okay, so we'll say if row ID not equal to null, okay, because we don't want to do call this function if we don't have anything selected. Okay, so if we don't have something selected, then um, how, what was it? Self.treeView.delete, I think. Row ID. Let's just see if it works. So let's select this one and delete. Oh, of course not, because the functions aren't connected to the uh, functions. Sorry, the button isn't connected to the function. That's why. So there we go. Yay, it worked. There we go. So we can now delete records. Pretty cool, right? Now let's take a look at adding records, okay? And when we're adding rec records, you might think that why am I teaching you this? Because I've already shown you how to add records over here. 
but I'm going to show you something a little more interesting this time. I'm going to show you how to actually add children, okay, into records, okay? And this is like the final topic here. So I've shown you how to uh, create the tree view, how to read data so far, how to delete data. Now I'll teach you how to, you know, take input from the user and insert that data, okay? And how to add children, because children are a very important aspect of tree view, okay? Because it's not a tree without children, okay? So keep that in mind. So let's add in some records now. Let's make a manual function for that, add record. And over here, we're gonna take input from the user, then add the record into the tree view. Now, how do we do so? Well, after some thought, the system that I came up with, the technique that I came up with was using a series of message dialogues to take input from the user, okay? And you may not think this is the best approach, but if you come up with a better one, do let me know. All right, so uh, I'm gonna import simple dialogue, okay, used to create message dialogues. And what I want is the parent, the name, the email, and the salary. So what we're gonna do is create four dialogues. The first dialogue is created like so, x string. First parameter is the title, the title that appears on the, uh, on the message box. And the second is the question, the question that appears uh, on the message part, okay? So this question will be inter parent, if exists, okay? So if we're entering a child record, uh, what, what am I doing? All right, so if there's a child record that we want to add, then we'll enter a parent. If there's not, we'll leave this blank, okay? Then we'll add in the name, okay? Dot x string input enter name okay and we'll just copy this now for the other two okay enter email and enter salary now now that we have this data let's go ahead and insert it okay so this is parent instead of blank this time tk.end text can be name values is going to be the email and salary you can put this in a list in a tuple whatever and there we go oh one more thing uh is there a mistake in there oh of course there's an e or there okay and we need to link this function to our button self dot add record Okay, and if I try to add a record now, it says enter parent if exists. Let's leave this blank for now. Enter name, we'll call it a uh, coder, or wait, we, we already have that one. We'll call it Kate. Then enter email kate at hotmail.com. Okay, salary 10,000. There we go, it's added in. Pretty cool. And we can go ahead and, and delete it again as well. Okay, so let's figure out how to add in some children. Okay. Well, if I want to enter a children, so I need to enter its parents record, okay? Record number. So let's say Mark. Mark is record number what? Zero, one, two, three, three. Uh, by the way, this is the index, okay? This is why I said the index is important because you need the index to make a child, okay? Because you need to search for the parent using the index, okay? So if I do this, then I enter the name, let's call it child, child at parent.com. Salary can be 500. And there we go. If you see this little thing over here, I can expand it and there we have the child. All right, so with this, our tutorial is over and I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys found it interesting, okay? And all this code will be available on the website as well. You can go check that out, all the code and also some extra functions and extra identifiers and stuff that you can use with Treeview some different options and stuff that's all available on the website you can check that out if you're interested all right and yeah uh, i do hope you guys subscribe to the channel because we have more ttk content coming out we have obviously more tickinger content coming out we have other python gui libraries that we cover so i do hope you guys subscribe to the channel and you know stay stay notified all right so with this we're done later